So guys, let's talk about the windbreak. So here's a rose, I never pl I planted this rose here, but it was in an old bed behind me, so I moved it over here just to kind of give it more colour and some scent. Um, but yeah, because this lady before who lived here, she loved roses. But look, if you look closely at the back there, can you see it? Let me just zoom in quickly. Sorry for the zoom, but there's like a chocolate, I think it's called chocolate multibrosum, I can't remember the name, I think it's a chocolate albizia. I'll Google, I'll put the name at the bottom of the, of the screen. But yeah, it's hidden in the back there. I forgot about it, if I'm honest with you. And oh, we've got a little stray fuchsia here. That was in the garden too. That was a predecessor's plant. So I've moved it here. That's kind of doing all right. And this lovely tree here is a katsura. And it's got a lovely autumn color. And it's got a lovely fragrant flower when it comes autumn time. It's really, really nice. Definitely recommend it. And sadly, this hibiscus passed away. Nice bit of kindling anyway. It's weird, the one that the land survived, but not this guy. Over here, we have a, what's it called again? Rosa, Flo Rosa Lady Marmalade Floribunda. And mate, if you guys, if you could be here to smell this guy, it smells so, that's not a bad example of it. It's a bad example, sorry. This is a, a, more, a better example of the flower. It smells really, really nice. Definitely one to have. And up here, let's go up quickly. Here, obviously, Virginia Creeper, lovely autumn colour. This one's called um, Parthenicis Vecchii. I recommend this one. All the rest I think are a bit wishy-washy. This is by far the best one because it looks the best on houses if I'm honest. And down here, let's go down, scroll down. So here we have a ev no, it's not evergreen, so it's um it is evergreen, but it's a climbing hydrangea. I prefer I, I'm, 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 I've got a love-hate relationship with hydrangeas, but I do like the climbing one because it's evergreen and it's not as blousy, but at the same time I'm kind of I'm warming towards hydrangeas. The older I get, the more I warm to hydrangeas. But here we have a Trachylospernum jasminoides or evergreen jasmine. Lovely plant, has amazing scented flowers come summertime. Down here we have lots of little wildflowers. We've got, we've got willow herb, we have, what's this guy? We've got a rose bay willow herb, we've got some aqualegia. Oh look, they've got aqualegia, a little pink one. Definitely pluck the seeds of these guys. Check to see a little close up of this. Oh, let's get a close up of the flowers. The bees go crazy for these guys. Sorry for the wobbly camera, this camera's kind of heavy. And what's down here? We've got Creeping Jenny. It's in the name, guys. Creeping Jenny can grows really well inside, too. Nice plant, it's got like a more yellowy, greeny leaf, as you can see down here. And this little sweet little flower here is called. Oh, zoom in, focus, focus camera, focus. There he goes. It's called Ivy Leaf Toad Flax. And it's a sweet little flower. It kind of looks like Nemesia, the flower. I think I wouldn't be sure if they're related. I, I'll Google it. But this flower is. But what I know about it is that what it does when it when it seeds. You know, most plants when they they kind of creep to different places, they literally just kind of feel along and just find their place basically with their kind of roots. But with this plant, what it does, it gets its seed and pops it in a hole or like a crack. Because you normally see them in walls and stuff, and especially pro pro propagates itself to then spread and do what it's doing. Oh look, and I had a clematis here. I don't think it passed away. Uh, sad time. Oh, is it? Yeah, it has it passed away. Oh well. And up here is what is this again? It's my. Lin well, I'm in the way of the sun. The sun's not around here. It's the Linicera purpusei, which is basically a winter honeysuckle, and it's got lovely, sweet, fragrant flowers, like ridiculously fragrant come uh, winter time. And yeah, it's really, really nice one to have, I'd say. My clematis freckles is finished, done for the day. Oh look, prime example of the, the cornice and what it does, providing for all sorts of little bees and insects. Oh, I got the leaf in the way. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. And down here, I've got my Fatsia japonica. Forgot about that. So I'm in the way, I'm right above the sun. You see my silhouette. But yeah, it's Fatsia but I think it's a bit too hot for this place. It's a nice plant, it gets really, really big. Flowers in winter time, and the bees and insects like the flowers of it. It's like a late feed for all the late kind of pollinators. And but the thing is, I think this guy is in a too hot of a spot because you can see the yellow leaves on it. And come late, like kind of midsummer, you can see it start to get a bit scorched. So I might kind of, I think I will when I leave. I will take that. There's a few shrubs I will take because I left some in. I'll be honest with you, I left some in because I thought to myself <laughs> it would look a bit unsightly if I take all the. Um, all the plants out but oh look here's some leftover f this is what clematis freckles i put a little vid over the top what it normally looks like in the in its peak times but this is the flowers the fluff 
the seeds of the freckles. Really nice. Really, really nice plant. And here we have the Cornus alba. And this is the main chunk of the windbreak. It's got a bit of field maple there too. That's got a nice little bit of one colour. Goes crazy, spreads like crazy. Both of them spread crazy, which is kind of what I want for this section. And yeah, the bees and the birds love the flowers of this plant. I think see sparrows in here at the end of the day, like blue tits, all sorts. So yeah, another one to have. Listen, you can hear the buzzing of the bees. So here is Coco's toilet when she uses it. So on to the right of it, basically what I do, I, I do another vermicompost um, vlog one day, but there's a wormery next door and I feed the worms Coco's poop. Yes, worms eat poo, people. So yes, I'll move on to from, let's talk about that another day. So over here is a scented cat border. It was for when um, I had a catio, but now it's just kind of, I just love it. It's just kind of full and you can't see the soil and that's what mother nature wants to do. She doesn't like bare soil people filling your gaps. So over here, we've got a valerian again. It was, well, it was flowering, but cedar then took off all the flowers. And here we have some Moroccan mint. This, I put like about 10 clumps of this in there. You smell that? It smells delish. Some rosemary. This was, where did I get that rosemary? I got this from Wandsworth and I parted it in because I like, apparently scientists say that rosemary makes you, you smarter. I definitely need that. And over here, you can see some cuckoo spit, but we'll talk about that on another thing. Ting Watch. Got a new, new, new series called Ting Watch coming up. Here we have Rose Bay Willow Herb. I've got quite a few willow herbs out there. I just got some cuckoo spit. Lovely. But um, yeah, there's loads of Rose Bay Willow Herb. This guy can get taller than me. Lovely plant. Really, really nice flower. And if you move down here, there's a rare shrub. You don't really see it that often, but it's called a Carolina Allspice. If you look. You can see the old flower. Look, you can see it's a bit too hot here. Normally it should be like a nice, ripe looking burgundy colour all over, but you can see it's just a bit too hot. You can see a bit of singe, but, um, frost damage too. It, yeah, it looks happy, it's very nice, but I've noticed it's not, I've seen it in another place and it's really, really a lot, lot happier than this, but, but still it's existing at the end of the day. Right, let's step over the bed. I don't want to crush anything. So here, more rose bay, will have more mint, more valerian down there. I know there's normal willow herb just there, if you look. That's normal willow herb. A little pink flower there, the bees go crazy for that too. So we jump down here. And look, this is a type of Daphne. I think it's Daphne, I'll write the name at the bottom. I know there's Daphne and it begins with T, the number letter. I can't really know the number name, but I can't remember it. And this plant here smells really sweet. It's called Bastard Balm. I can't remember the Latin name, but I'll write it again, I'll write it at the bottom of the screen. It's a really nice plant. Perennial comes up and down, and again, yeah, it smells really, really sweet, guys. So, when you're going to have a cat toilet, you need sweet things around it. And here's, what's it called again? Car Campanula Carpatica. Lovely little plant. And this, again, this kind of spreads like crazy. Nice bit of ground cover, and will take over the place. And look, the mint's in the cat toilet minty fresh poop and yeah be warned people when you plant mint it does spread but again i don't really mind it pardon me again it's another dynamic i put a link here for dynamics dynamic accumulators if you're not sure what they are but yeah really really nice border i'm really happy with it the way it's filled out because again you can't see any soil this plant i always forget the name of it it smells really weird i'm not a fan can anyone let, tell me what it is it's got like a flower like a salvia leaves like a nettle and smells, it's, I don't know. I know it's big in Germany because they, they, they're big on the honey up there. And there's one honey I bought, my missus bought back from Berlin and it tasted like this flower. So I'm sure this, it grows white, wild. It's not, it's not meadow sweet. It's something like that. I can't remember the name, but I'm sure it'll come to me. If not, I'll put it at the bottom of the, um, the page. And there's some aquilegia in here. Where is it gone? I think it's got drowned out, but oh there it is, it's in there. If you can see the purple aquilegia can gather some seeds. So, to the right of the cat toilet. So even look, look how I care for these worms, like in the winter time they're, they're insulated. 
so not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> so I've got some, um, a little bit of lily of the valley down there. I kind of took some out because it was just in the way, I needed the way for the cat toilet. Some bramble at the back, but yeah, the lily of the valley is doing really well around the back. And more comfrey. I think I'm sitting on some comfrey actually. And I did my crop and drop video. There you go, some more comfrey. The more the better. And there's some comfrey. Oh yeah, and over here, this side, technically this is the north side, north facing side. But because yeah, you say that, the house is so low down here, you get all the light in the world. But this is a jasmine officinal and a trachylus sperm and jasminoides. They never did too, I don't know why, I think it might be frost damage. So over here got my tumbling composters. They're good, but then if you put too much in they just, they buckle and you, as soon as you turn them they just break. And so, I say if you do get some of these guys, make sure you don't put too much in. But yeah, they're really good. They're full of stuff now, they're usable stuff, so I should really dig them out. Got a water butt here. Annoyingly the cats use this as like a step to get through from neighbour to neighbour so they keep popping off the lid so <laughs> I keep losing rainwater but I'm not too fussed because I'm leaving soon so I'm moving to Scotland so I get all the rain in the world so that's this side and there's more grass growing here but like I said I'm not too fussed I did have a fig on here and some alder because alders are nitrogen fixes and some other stuff but again I just like the wild meadow look and the bees are happy and the bugs too so here's bed number one so I got some more, well, some some netting here because of Coco likes to kind of. If the bed's too, if the toilet's too full, she tends to like to want to use this bed. It's nice and fluffy and, and inviting. So what I've got, I planted some oxide daisy here. There's a few things I planted. There's a lot of things I just kind of let grow wild. Where is it? There's some borage down here I planted recently. Some nasturtiums. Oh, a little little forget me not. In an English. Cedar bead. Sorry, cedar's next to me right now. He's in making all sorts of noise but we've got some buttercups oh and I forgot to dig this gooseberry up because the missus she likes um gooseberry we had about 10 and I took them all up but I forgot about this one so hopefully this fruits before we leave but I'm definitely taking it to US when we when we we up ship and go more downy lines and and look check out this chard I'm not sure you many of you seen chard this big but the reason why we're letting it get this big is because we want it to seed so we can take all the seed heads and have some more chard and newest. Yeah, we could dig them up, but the seeds is kind of a, a surefire way of going to get in loads more crop than just a cutting, if you know what I mean. And some more red campion down here. Let's move further down the bed. More chard. Oh, I forgot about the, um, the spring greens, boob. Mm -hmm. Check out the spring greens. What are these guys, see the BD? You see spring greens? seed in the Cuban top but yeah spring greens and you can see like it's had a bit of predation but other than that I'm not too fussed we've still got a nice crop we're gonna share in it share it's good to share it's good to share in it cedar mm. <laughs> and, uh, we've got some leak oh look there's leak from last year look, it's flowering so every so often we can uh, crop this and have a nice little kind of add gives a bit of flavor to our food basically right here here is my mess so you can see me we stand over here Here's my, my meadow patch with my fancy swimming pool. Cost me thousands. <laughs> but I thought I can't be bothered. I was going to turn this into a lawn if we were to stay here long enough so then these guys can play in it. But again, we've got this place that we're going to create into like some nice sitting area. But I quite like the wildness of it. So we had loads of dandelions, as you can see. More, oh, Aquilegia pink one. Oh, it's finished flying over there. So definitely going to take some of the seed heads from the Uist. Some red campion again, and this dock. You must think I'm crazy to have dock, but look what is on the dock. Aphids, loads and loads of aphids. So why get rid of the dock? Because then the aphids will look something, look for something else to go on, i.e. my vegetables. So again, I say it's good to have flowers around your plants because they distract and then give food and pollination and pollinate or, or good for pollinators basically. Right, let's talk this bed. This is the bed on the right. This is that let's see bed number two. So here we have some sage. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just chucked it in. And it's only I've been gardening for 14 years and I only realized what five years ago that sage flowered. And it's got a lovely flower, it's really, really pretty. I, I kind of feel like I want to bring this too. So we've got some more buttercups down here. I did plant a broccoli, a tiny broccoli down here. Like you can see it's been munched. 
safety in numbers, people. And I've got some just grass here, some dandelions. Like I said, I'm not too fussed. More borage down here. And my missus is planting some, some peas. I think they're more two peas. We need to add things. She keeps eating, both of them keep eating. I don't really get any, but I don't do fuss. It's for them, really. And some more, um, bay, I mean, sorry, willow herb. And this, this plant here is lamb quarters. If you guys got chickens, they really, really like this. And this is a very good um, dynamic accumulator too. I'll write at the bottom of the screen of what it kind of gives if you were to kind of crop and drop it. But again, it's an annual, so make sure it seeds before you do so, because then you'll, you won't get any more. And over here, we've got some butternut squash. It was struggling, you can see it's gone a bit yellow, but it's kind of turning, changing colour now, because now it's in the ground. Some more dispersions. Forget me nots on their last bit of life. More valerian. And you can see the leek flowering down there too. And these deer antlers were given to us um, a gift by some lady. She kind of she has a dog and she couldn't stand the cats coming in the house, so she kind of literally lined a whole garden fence all the way around with these and the cats don't come in. So Coco likes to use other ventures when it comes to toileting. So that's why we're gonna put these down. But she's done good so far. So this is bed number two. So here we have some flax. Yeah, the same thing as linseed, my missus says. Basically she's doing some art project where they grow some flax. Was she growing it for? I can't remember what she's growing it for. I think she's gonna make some material, some some rubbish. I shouldn't say that. But um but yeah, this is she's gonna take over the bed to kind of grow some flax and it's done really well. Lots of comfrey tea folks. And over there's a little nasturgium well I say little, nasturgium. This guy got battered. Look at the look at the damage from the hailstorm. Jeez, it's got a long time to grow. Here's the remains of a daffodil. Down here, what we've we got down here, we've got more borage, we've got more nasturtiums, more broccoli, more primula. And here is another plant I like. I hope it grows in US. It's called Rigian Calvinskianus. And it's kind of, it's a Mexican daisy, or what's it called? What's that word? Some, something bane. Flea bane. It's another common name of it. And yeah, it spreads like crazy. It's a bit like, have you heard of um, Artemis? What's it called again? Alcamilla mollis. Not does it fly the same. It's not, it's, not, it's not the same plant, but it has a similar tendency to kind of fill in every nook and cranny around the place. And I'm sure you guys know what this is. This is clover, and clover is a nitrogen fixer. I got nowhere else in the garden but here, so it's about to flower now too. So the bees will be happy. Don't worry, my missus is not a fisherman, she just likes kind of gathering stuff from the seaside because that's where she's from, that's where we're going back to Uist. So yeah, we've got some borage and broccoli, I thought it sounded, I like a bit of alliteration, so I thought some pollinators and some broccoli because broccoli leaves are edible to people. And yeah, obviously the flower heads as you know, or the buds heads, the buds sorry. But we put this down because Coco took an interest in it and started to kind of scratch in the bed and I was like, I'm not having that, so I thought I'd use this. Some plants don't like to be next to itchy things like bramble and stuff, but these guys are done pretty well, so we'll wait and see. And plus, I need to clean up Coco. If I don't clear out Coco's bed, she tends to use other places, so it's kind of my fault, really. And here we have a tom. I'm not sure the type of tom. I got some free seed, so I put this in there. It's doing pretty well. And I've got what is this again? I think this is another butter, butternut squash, and it's got battered by the the hailstorm as well. A slap in the face by Mother Nature, and more broccoli. And this bed, this bed here, this is another wild one. It's going to start to get more, more wild as we further we go down. But here we have some more broccoli, broccoli, nasturgium, um, what is that, courgette, sorry. Some dandelions popping up, but I think some of the logs I used, because like, this is a hugel mound, I'll explain properly in a sec. And yeah, there was nettles in it, and the nettles have gone crazy. And I thought I'd chuck in a little fennel down here, because they get just as tall. I don't think I'll cut this again. Maybe just the size because of cedars and kind of he understands it, but he always what he's yeah he's a he's a toddler, so yeah I'll just keep this gonna let gonna grow really tall and keep it for the butterflies because they do like a bit of stinging it. Oh look, the little sly little Camellia japonica coming back. I'll leave that. So hugo culture. Hugo culture is called it's basically it means mound culture. So what you do is you get loads of logs, old logs, you pile them up. You put soil on top, then you put some manure, and you can put some more soil on top of that and create like a nice Toblerone type shape. And then what you do, you plant that up and then your plants will thrive because what will happen is that the logs will wick moisture and then when they break down, they'll feed the plant at the same time. But 
be warned when you do do this it takes up to a year in some cases for the logs to actually start to break down and start to can give back and all sorts so you might make a hugelkultural bed and then the first year a bit like ah but then the second year you will see you'll reap the benefits of it so a patient thing but it's definitely worth it this is a neater way of doing it because a lot of people they go around looking with massive mounds of toberone but I kind of I thought about it but I thought this is a lot neater it looks a lot better and look presentable and stuff so it's all kind of compacted so so yeah it's kind of it's, it's work magic so so yeah I'm happy so bed number six and again in fact Coco didn't use this bed but I thought I'd keep the moisture in and keep it because these guys were kind of they fell out of their pot when they were young and they kind of they didn't take to, they haven't taken to freedom yet and they're kind of a, a bit slow so if you here's a little perennial I like it's called the Bina Benariensis looks a bit yellowy I think it might be a bit too hot there's lots of good stuff in here so i don't know why it's looking like that so uh, fingers crossed in time we're going to pick up and again like when i first started gardening like seeing grass coming out the side and like wildflowers popping through would have drove me insane but now it's just like it's live and let live because end of the day like this plant still got space to grow and for example what you do if you don't like the plant being where it is you just keep plucking it and just kind of just free mulch at the end of the day free mulch for the plant <laughs> that you got you got growing here so it's just like a nice yeah, just live and let live and fingers crossed these guys come back this guy has, is looking a lot better whereas this guy is looking a bit like sad but hey we shall see we shall recap in a couple of weeks and here we have the wild patch so we've got some sand for the birds and the, the bee wannabes obviously that's weird, these guys sunbathing. What are they doing? Hi. And foxglove for the bees. I never planted this, this just came with it. And and some, I forget the name, I kind of forget the name, Budlia davidii, there you go. This is another good plant for the birds, the bees and the butterflies. It's got a, little, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with it, like a lot of people have, but I really enjoy it because I like having it around. It's a really nice plant. Like for when you have one, by what couple of years you could have like a good five or six and you can spread them and put them if your garden's big enough in different locations cut back hard every year can be used for kindling so yeah a very good plant to have and cedar likes to play in here he likes to have a little kind of fun dig around and kind of build mat like sand castles and the birds like to kind of play around and using it as crop as well so putting a little bit of mulch down here just kind of old cuttings and stuff kind of nice little habitat for the for the insects and we've got some fennel down here some tomatoes and some more borage so more for the pollinators and nice little crop for us too so we can give us an excuse to come down here and I think that down there so we've got the sun that is a lemon verbena let me smell a little wild one coming back again I didn't plant that oh, actually no it's not a lemon I don't know what it is but <laughs> it smells like <laughs> it doesn't smell like anything my bad but anyways, more potentilla popping up in places but again, I like that plant. So yeah, this is the last bed. But yeah, so this is the wild patch. And I'm still learning zones when it comes to permaculture. I kind of just kind of went with what, what's in there, if you know what I mean. I kind of didn't really kind of plan it as much. I planned the space because as you can see, I've got a big, big shed behind me, but yet every single bed gets as loads and loads of light, which I kind of planned for. Because I knew like I'm not really like south. I say, they say south, south is that way, but then the sun kind of goes straight over us like this. So we just get all the sun. So any bit of shade that the shed gives is just literally just in front of there. So you look, you see, I do a little vlog, so a little VT so you can see, but um, but yeah. So this would be kind of the zone where you don't really come to that much. It's a zone like six, seven, like where your fruit, I was going to put some fruit trees here and stuff like that. Shit, I wasn't even going to build a greenhouse there, but I built the greenhouse at the land. Anyways, I'm blabbing. But another thing we've got too, I forgot to mention, We have elderflower. So the missus every so often, I think last year, yeah, early this year, I can't remember when, but a couple of weeks ago, she picked some of these flowers and stuff to make some cordial. So she's there knocking it back. And another thing we're blessed with is that we can pop out, ah, sorry, and we head to the gate and go to the mill pond, which you just saw. So we went to feed the duck, the geese today. And we got, look at that. You see all those brambles? Getting primed and ready for later on. Hopefully we get a nice, nice pick of the bunch. It's quite sweet because you see everyone coming around with their bowls and start picking like crazy, but it's a nice thing. It's a nice thing to see. Nice protection too. 
I need to clean, so make some space here. But anyways, so there you have it, guys. That is my garden.